all starting to play with identities today. And I want to walk you through one. I'm going to talk you through some steps. And then after that, um, probably try to do a couple more examples. Um, a little different from what we were doing before. Before we were start saying start with one side and make sure it ends up like the other side. Here you've got an equation, as you can see. And so it really doesn't matter which side you start with. Um, our goal here is to show that, um, sorry for the pause, show that these two parts, that this and this are equal. Um, now the thing is, remember that this is not true yet. Okay, so what's not allowed is I can't just say, oh, let's add two to both sides. That's not allowed because this is not an equality. You're trying to prove that the equality exists. Okay, so with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get started with this. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off with one side. And you're going to go through and do a series of steps. And we're going to try to get this into something that says secant squared x plus 2 tangent x. So one of the first steps here, which would be good, is to multiply this out. Don't be dumb and do this incorrectly. Now again, if you want to, you can substitute, let's say, a variable in for tangent, so that tangent x, so that um, you can do this. When you multiply this out, I'm going to get 1 minus, I'll end up with 2 tangent x's plus tangent squared x. Now notice here, this part I've already got. Okay, so now what we need is the secant squared x. And so the first thing that I would do is I would try to make sure, I would rearrange it so it kind of matched up. So I would say, okay, 1 plus tangent squared x minus 2 tangent x. So the 2 tangent x is there. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, if you didn't see it before, that little voice in the back of your head is saying, hey, Look, it's a squared term and a 1. So this should be a Pythagorean of some sort. In fact, it is secant squared. And there's your proof. You just proved that that worked. Okay? No playing on both sides of the street at the same time. You're proving that this equality works. Now... Some strategies. I'm going to rattle these off and then um, pause it so you can copy these down. Okay, so watch first, copy later. Um, first things first, know your identities from the first part of the section. Know the Pythagoreans, know the reciprocals, know the opposite angle ones, um, know the quotient identities. We're going to add to them as we go, but those right now, the whole goal here is to get this so that you know them like you love them. Start with the more complicated side and make it simpler. Okay, unlike, you know, relationships with, you know, other people where you getting complicated is a very easy thing to do because you can say something wrong or be mean or something like that. In math, it's much easier to make things simpler than knowing where you need to make things more complicated to get something specific. Third, rewrite the more complicated side in terms of sine and cosine. If you're not sure what to do and you've got tangent or secant or cosecant or cotangent, write in terms of sine and cosine and see what divides out because usually something will and then your eyes will be opened. Also, perform any algebra operations just like we did. We multiplied out those two sides. We squared it. Find a common denominator. Mix things together. Um, if you've got two terms, combine them into one term if, they, if you're looking for one term at the end, that type of thing. Remember your goal. You're just driving around and you're not sure, you know, you're supposed to be trying to go to the target, but you're just driving around aimlessly. You're never going to get there. Well, you might, but, you know, it's much easier if you kind of have an idea of, all right, I need to go down this road or whatever. And then lastly, I'll move the window for you. If you see something where it's just 1 plus sine x, okay, something that's very close to one of those Pythagorean identities, multiply it by the conjugate so you can get a Pythagorean identity, and then you can change it into something nicer. Okay, so pause and copy as you need to. Now, here's one. Check out number two. That looks a little bit more complicated on that side, so that's the side I'm going to play with. So again, please remember, 
you can't do things on both sides. You have to start with one side and end up on the other. So I'm going to start on the left side with the division. Now, you should be hearing some bells going off in the back of your head. Because of what's 1 minus cosine squared? You're right, sine squared y. Now notice, we want up here, we want a sign. We have two of them down here. Okay? So, we need to get one. So, the next step that I would do, and this is going to be the thing that, you know, you try to make things into a simpler step, is that I would write this out, because I want one of my signs. I've got sine y times sine y times tan 1 over tangent y. And then start messing with that. That's just not good. Today's secret word is starlight. Okay. Um, and then from here, we already have the sign, so now we're going to play around with the other side. Because again, here, let's keep this. Okay, so we want sine y. So we want sine y, cosine y. So now the question is, how can I mess with sine and tangent? Well, let's write it in terms of sine and cosine. Um, this, I could rewrite as cotangent. And then when I set that up, write that in terms of sine and cosine. <gasps> now look what happens. You should be able to get to this step on your own. Remember, the check mark in the QED, quarter out demonstratum, quite easily done is to signify that you are done, or that at least that you recognize that you are done. But again, here, signs divide out. Ooh. I think this will be the last one, because I have to run to class after this. But it's a good one. When you have two fractions, and you're trying to combine them into one thing, how do I add two fractions together? Let's go back to middle school. Oh, that's right, common denominators. So, my common denominator here will become cosine beta, sine beta. So, this side over here needs a sine. This side over here, ooh, actually, wait, 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 pause, rewind. I was reading this as cosine. <laughs> Watch this. Cosecant, what's that? That is really 1 over sine beta. So we already have it there. I didn't take my own advice. So sorry. Still the same common denominator, though. So we, the left side's already done, right? This is si this is already going to be sine co. This side over here is already sine cosine. So I don't have to do anything there. That's going to turn into a one. Minus this side needs another cosine. So I get 1 minus cosine beta. Actually, this should be cosine squared beta. My apologies. Thank you for yelling. That bell's going off in the back of your head again. I know. Well, do something about it. All right, well, just settle down. All right, so all of that then, 1 minus cosine is just sine squared beta by the Pythagorean. This is, again, remember, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So sine squared is going to be 1 minus cosine. So I get sine squared over 
sine beta cosine beta. So the sines are going to drop. One of the sines divide out, so I get just a single sine on the top over a single cosine, which, because you know your cosine identities, and you've got the reference sheet that I told you to make sitting out on your desk all ready to rock and roll, goes into tangent of beta. Okay? Um, so that should give you some good examples to play with. Um, your homework for tonight is actually more or less straightforward of just factor this, simplify that, and we're going to jump into some more of these for tomorrow. All right? See you then.